Hello, my name is Jan. I'm a PhD student and as part of my PhD, I'm working with partial least squares, to be exact with partial least squares smart PLS. And while working with it, I decided that I wanted to completely understand the algorithm. And thus I decided to calculate some basic data with Excel and um, get the same results as I got in Smart PLS and it took me quite some time and so I decided to make this video and share this Excel sheet with you. So I hope some of you might find this helpful. To start with, I the, um, created my own model, which is just um, an example model. So we got uh, product satisfaction as one latent variable and service satisfaction as the other latent variable and they both point to loyalty and uh, all these uh, constructs are measured by indicators. So we got three indicators for the product and for the service and we got two indicators for loyalty. And as input data, I just created some artificial data. Uh, so we got here in the first column the case number and then we got for product, service and loyalty random data between one and seven. It's not totally random, so I made some um, adjustment to the data so I would finally find some meaningful results. And um, basically, I first gave loyalty and um, two a random value, and then I gave some randomness to loyalty one in connection with loyalty two. And from these, I also get, um, generated other random values um, based on loyalty one and loyalty two to generate the service and product indicator values. So um, the first step in the algorithm is to normalize the data and uh, that's what I did here. I calculated the average for the above values. As you can see here on the formula, it's Mittelwert. So it's, sorry, it's my German Excel, but if you open the sheet, you will see the sheet in your language and you'll um, easily grasp the, the formulas used. And so here I got the average and basically what I do then, nothing surprising, I'll um, subtract the average and then I divide the result by the standard deviation and thus I get normalized data. And here I got uh, 30 records just to make it uh, not too, too complex. Um, and yeah, that's, that's my, my starting point. So, um, but first have a look at the uh, at the algorithm itself. So um, I copied this um, description of the algorithm on the sheet source from uh, Hensler, Ringler and Saarstedt 2012 um, using partial least square pass modeling in uh, international advertising research. And basically the algorithm has two stages. The first stage is um, the iterative estimation of the latent variable scores with four steps. And then we got a, a second stage with the final estimations of um, loadings and pass coefficients, coefficients. And here in the Excel, I got um, two sheets, which is stage one and stage two. And yeah, we'll dive directly into stage one. Before we look into the Excel, um, I'll briefly explain the how the stage one part of the of the algorithm works um, on this uh, in this presentation because I think it's way easier to understand. Uh, first, we have um, yeah, actually three models, two outer models, um, which usually relate the uh, indicators to the Latin constructs. Um, here for product one, two, and three to product, um, the construct, which is marked yellow. And the same is the outer model for um, loyalty. And we got an inner model, which relates the product to loyalty and also the service to loyalty. And the, the first step we are now having in the uh, stage one is um, calculation of the outer approximation of the Latin constructs. And basically uh, we take the, the weights, which are here all initialized uh, as one and multiply each uh, of these weights by the normalized value of each indicator per case. So this is case one from the Excel sheet. And yeah, then uh, add these up. So um, since all weights are one here, you just add up these values and then um, 
the, the outcoming value is uh, 3.294 for product, 1.107 for service and 1.217 for loyalty. The second step is to, to again normalize these values and um, uh, to normalize these values of course you have to build an average and calculate the standard deviation for all 30 cases. Uh, I haven't done this in the um, in this presentation, but I have taken the values in the Excel sheet. So um, here you find the outer normalized value in the bottom left of these uh, four boxes. Step 1.2 is now the inner path calculation. And this is done basically by taking the covariances between the outer approximations for all cases. So um, we take this value uh, for all the 30 cases and this value for all the 30 cases and calculate the covariance and we get 0.817 as the result. And we do the same for this value and this value um, to calculate this path between service and loyalty and we get 0.799 as a result. In the third step, we now do the inner estimation. And this is again just um, a multiplication. Uh, and this um, for, for product, we calculate it by taking all the related constructs. And this there's only one relation between product and any other Latin construct, which is this one to loyalty. So basically we uh, multiply 0 0.817 with 0 0.6401. And then we get this result and we do the same for for loyalty except we don't uh, we take again 06401 times 799 and we get 0 0.5112 and to get loyalty we take the um, product of the service of this service value sorry so we take 0.429 times 0.799 plus 1.2837 times 0.817 and we get as outcome 1.3928. These values are again normalized and again I haven't uh, I have calculated the standard deviation uh, based on all 30 cases and that's got my um, values uh, and I come to these uh, final um, inner estimations. In the, the last step, we update the outer weights and this is done by building the covariance between the inner normalized estimation. So basically this bottom right value and the indicators, um, each indicator's value. So we compare the 30 values we got for the inner estimation for product to the 30 values, um, initial values um, of the data for product one to calculate this, this um, top arrow. This is done again by calculating the covariance. And basically the, the, the result is again, is here 0 0.778. And this is done for all the, um, all the values for all the um, other indicators. As a last step, these values are again normalized and that is where I stuck uh, a long time when comparing the data to smart PLS um, because this um, normalization is yeah, from my perspective something which should be done in the next iteration but nevertheless it is done um, at the end of, um, of this iteration. So that sums up how the uh, one iteration of the algorithm works and now we would start again calculating the, making the auto approximation, calculating this bottom, uh, this top, top left value, and basically go on with this algorithm until the difference between the weight changes, um, so these values marked red in, in this sheet, um, are very, very small, and at that point the, the algorithm stops. Returning to the, to the Excel sheet, um, we'll have a quick look at uh, how this algorithm works out. So we are on stage one on the sheet and we have our normalized input data here in, these, in this block basically. And we have the, I called it step zero, the 
Optimization of the weights, uh, they all start with one. So everything which is marked green in this sheet um, should be edited. The rest of the sheet is um, yeah, basically formulas. And uh, as I showed earlier, the first formula is the um, calculation of the outer estimates. And as you can see, it's just um, building the product of the first path, um, product one I called it, um, and the, the value for product one, case number one. And yeah, basically um, adding it, um, basically making a, this the small multiplication and building the sum, and thus getting this value. Uh, this is done basically for all the, the other 30 cases or 29 cases as well. And the same goes for service and for loyalty. So um, what uh, the next is the standardization. And yes, you can see at the bottom here, I'm scrolling to the right. Um, you can see here that uh, here I calculated the standard deviation and I divide all the, um, the values uh, here by the standard deviation to get the standardized um, outer estimations. So this is the formula. Um, standard deviation, um, don't be confused. This is the German names. Um, if you open the sheet, you will see them in your own language um, or the, the Excel uh, language you're using. Um, the next step is the calculation of the inner passes. So this is the, um, done by looking into the covariance of the outer estimations. So um, if I look into the path between product and loyalty, um, I built the covariance between the outer estimation for product um, and for loyalty. And for service, I do the same with uh, the um, service construct and the loyalty construct. Um, here at the bottom in the blue ones, you find the, the formulas um, either for the uh, factor weighting um, scheme um, or for the centroid weighting scheme. And if you want to use the uh, centroid uh, formula, you just um, mark those two cells and copy them. And then you can um, drop them here um, just by copying the formula. And uh, then you can use this, this weighting scheme, but we'll um, stick to the factor weighting scheme right now. The third step is the inner estimation. And this is again multiplying this uh, new calculated value um, with the, um, as I said, so if we want to calculate the product value, we take this uh, relation weight and the um, loyalty value in this case. And for service, it's done um, in the same way, except we take the other path weight. And for loyalty, um, it's um, the sum of um, both products. Again, we have this, um, at the bottom we have these um, standard deviations. And in the standardization, we just divide by the standard deviation. This brings us to the, to the last step which is the calculation of the outer weights. And here it's again the covariance, as I um, showed earlier in the presentation, between the standardized inner estimation for product. And if we scroll to the very left, we'll see that it looks into the product one indicator data. And yeah, basically to to get the standardized values, I did um, added this, these sheets here. Basically, this is uh, nothing else than the values um, of basically step 1.1. And then I get again the standard deviations and I divide the values by the standard deviation and I get the resulting um, standardized weights. And these are actually the weights you see in Smart PLS in the um, iteration weights um, report. And what I um, to, to run the next iteration, what uh, you do is you copy these values and then you paste them here. Um, S values. And you also have to paste them here. Again, you 
um, only path the values and then this is basically iteration number two and, um, and going back here uh, we also have to calculate the stop criterion so the uh, default stop criterion is um, um, this this very small value to to, to, see, uh, to get this value or to see what the uh, change is you just copy this uh, formula from uh, the cell 82 and copy it to to this line and then we see the change was quite uh, dramatic so um, the iteration should go on and to, to save myself some, some copy pasting time, uh, I created a macro so I just can press next iteration and it'll um, just do the copy pasting because we don't do anything else than copy, copying this line um, down to here and to the, to the front page or to the start, um, start of the page. So this area and we look into this, this value here to see the stop criterion change. So we can press next iteration several times. We see this value gets uh, smaller and smaller. And now it's very small. And now we can see uh, we uh, reached the threshold. So um, the algorithm finally stops. And the, the values we get um, for the stop criterion are exactly those um, you can see in, in Smart PLS. And I'm just going to show you this, what I mean. So I have um, my, my model, this is exact, exactly the same setup. Then I um, start the calculation and I say open report. I look into the uh, interim results, stop criteria and changes report. And here I see the, the values and um, their changes. Um, and they are exactly the same as in this Excel sheet. You only have to, to take care that in the smart in smart PLS, the loyalty columns are the first uh, two columns, whereas uh, for me these are the last two columns. We ended at this point where we reached the stop criterion, but we only have seen the weight so far. Since we are calculating a mode A reflective model, we need to do some further calculation to get the uh, loadings, and this is done on stage two on the sheet. Um, here we got again our model and you can see uh, to get the uh, uh, correct loadings we calculate the covariance between the input uh, normalized input data so it's a uh, stage one sheet uh, and column B so at the very at the very um, left side and we compare it to W which is nothing else than the data from the final outer estimation and so we get again the covariance formula and then we get this, this loading um, value. So it's uh, for product one, it's 0.896. And if you look into the into smart PLS, it's also 0.896. The final values we now want to know are the path coefficients and the R squared. And for this, the, um, since Excel 2007, there's a function called line s to estimate by a linear regression the path coefficients and also the R square value. And the explanation of the formula is given here. Basically, this is um, the link you have to, to look into if you want to know more about this formula. And on German, the function is called RGP. Um, weird translation but that's just how it is so don't be confused if you see here this uh, function called uh, RGP it's the line est function and uh, also you see here um, another function which is the index function that's basically because the line est function is a matrix formula and so it gives um, back not a single cell value but it gives returns um, yeah, some, some type of matrix and uh, here I get the uh, results from um, the row one uh, and column two. That's um, the value I need uh, to get here. And looking into this matrix formula, it's the same for all uh, of these three values. Um, so this RGP function, the first value is the um, Y column and the um, second value is the 
W and X column so on stage one. So we go back on stage one and go to go to these values. And this is basically the uh, results of the last outer estimation we made. And Y is loyalty and W and X are product and service. And uh, going back to the formula, it basically um, says build this uh, regression with loyalty as dependent variable and product satisfaction and service satisfaction as independent variables. And this is basically uh, the value, uh, the weight for product, and this is the value of uh, the weight for, for service and the R squared between these um, three variables um, is also provided by this formula and it's in row number three and column number one and this value is uh, 77.6 and that's basically how the PLS algorithm works uh, for reflective indicators and um, just one last bit uh, we see here this R squared value and we see here these uh, this uh, path coefficient 0.51 and 0.434 and these match um, exactly those values here. I hope you find this helpful. And yeah, as I said, um, this is also an educational for myself. So if you find any errors, please let me know. And if you find that uh, this explanation helpful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you.